Hey guys, welcome back to Colson Scooters. I'm Colson Smith, and in today's video, we're gonna be giving a little update on like all my aquariums, and we're gonna be doing some upgrades to my 20 gallon Nano Reef. Show you some of my aquariums here and everything that's been going on, and yeah, let's get in the video. First things first with the big tank behind me here. Everything looks amazing, the coals are doing super well. My dad has been treating this tank with a dog dewormer to get rid of all of the um, stupid uh, clove polyp stuff that's been overgrowing here. And it's actually been working super well. As you can see, we're missing a lot of it. I can show up a clip of what it looked like before um, with all that fuzzy, um, gross uh, clove polyp, brown clove polyp that's been invasively taking over this area. And it's all been going away and all the other holes look fine with it as well, so that's good. If you want me to do a separate video on how he actually does all this, let me know down in the comments. My favorite fish right here is in the tank. This is the Velvet Fairy Rass. Leave a name for him in the comments too, because that's my favorite fish and we never even named him. So this is the 150 gallon reef. Let me know if you want another in detail video on this guy, but let's go to the other tank. My 10 gallon sitting right here in the middle of my kitchen. This is temporary because we were redoing all the windows in the house. I actually moved my tank away from the windows. So that's why it's here in the living room or in the kitchen. Today, we're gonna move this back into my bedroom, but let's go to the bedroom to show you my other tanks. Okay, here are the last three tanks, technically two and a half. And the reason I say two and a half is really because this tank is connected to that tank. So they're kind of the same tank system, but this is like kind of where I keep most of the corals down here. And then I put the, not oh, there are still corals up here. So I kind of lied, but this is gonna be a non reef safe tank. And I'm probably gonna get some angels and some other cool fish for this. So make sure y'all stay tuned. This is where we keep Fred the puffer, adorable little guy back there. And then this is Critters, which is our copper band, which is our logo. Obviously, the channel name is Colson's Critters, so that's why we named him Critters. My dad actually named that guy. So if you haven't watched my new video, be sure to check that out. But in the new video, we did end up catching a puffer, and he's down here. So as you can tell, he's not in this big tank, which is where he was originally. And that is because Fred, the little jerk that he is, was beating him up and chasing him around the tank. Although he doesn't have any ripped fins or anything. But just as a precaution, I put him down there. So what I'm gonna end up doing is I'm gonna stick Fred in the sump down here, and we're gonna move that guy into this tank, let him get used to the tank for a little bit, and then we're gonna try to reintroduce him in the big tank again and see what happens. I have pretty good hopes for it because Fred usually isn't a jerk, but I think since they're the same, like they're both puffers, and he's been in here for a very long time, and he's getting a little territorial. So I'm gonna try doing that and see what happens. Um, but that will be in a different video. Okay, now lastly, we have my 20 gallon aquarium. And as you can see, it's kind of spitting bubbles. You can see the air bubbles coming out. So what I've been doing in the past is I've been taking a cup of RODI water and dumping it in the back because the water's obviously low. Today, that's about a change and here's why. Okay, so today we're gonna be doing an unboxing. So we're gonna go ahead and cut open this box here. I got my knife. All right, we're gonna open up the box here. If y'all don't know this company, it is Coral View. Coral View is an amazing company. They actually sent me this um, ATO for my tank. So an ATO is called an auto top off. First I'm gonna unbox it and then I'll explain what it does in a second. So let's get this thing open. Okay, so we got two things here. We got our ATO, the Auto Ease ATO by Coral View and the ICP test. The ICP test was a little bonus thing they sent me. Um, but let me get you guys a little closer. Okay, so here is the Ice cap auto easy ATO, super easy to use, hence the name. Um, we're gonna be popping this on my 20 gallon today so I don't have to keep adding water by hand. It's easier to get to my 10 gallon, so I'm just gonna show you on the 10 gallon. But basically, with the saltwater aquarium, the fresh water in the water will evaporate, so you need to add fresh water back into your aquarium. So the water level will start to lower in the back here, and that's where the ATO comes in play. You have the ATO sensor, which will sit in here, and at that when it gets below that level, it'll tell the pump to pump more water back into your tank, making it to where you don't have to touch the tank, it'll just do it automatically, keeping the salinity um, at a perfect level and less swings in your aquarium so your corals will end up doing better. On my 20 gallon, I don't have one of these, so I've been adding it by hand pretty much every day, which gets really annoying, and also the salinity changes a lot, so my corals aren't as happy and I notice they close up a lot. So this is gonna make my life a lot easier and I won't even have to touch it. The good news about my 20 gallon is that the algae is going down a lot better, looks a lot better. I do have some cyano though, so we're gonna be fixing that in a future video. Well, probably not even on a video. I'll just fix it and then give you all an update. But sad news is my dad came home and I was still at work and he found my chalk basket just sitting on the floor. So sadly, he jumped. Lucky part is I didn't even have a lid on the tank and he still ended up jumping. Um, the lid's like a homemade one that I made, so it's not the best. I do gotta get a better lid. I have this one here. It's actually made for a 25 gallon. 
Um, so I'm gonna end up cutting that to size and putting it on my 20 gallon because it'll be a lot better for the gaps and it's actually made for an innovative marine tank. Um, so we're definitely gonna be doing that, but not yet. Well, let's fix some of these corals in here. They fell and let's scrape this glass and get it a lot cleaner. Okay, now that we cleaned up the tank a bit and we moved some of the corals back up into their spots, we're gonna go ahead and set up this ATO. Before we get into the ATO, we gotta get our 10 gallon and our uh, mini fridge back here. So let's go grab that and carry it all the way over here. We're gonna go ahead and take out about five gallons of water. So just so it's easier for me to carry and so it's not splashing water everywhere. So we unplugged everything. We're gonna go ahead and drain this water. I drained just about, or I don't know, probably like three gallons of water. That'll be enough for me to carry it. So we're gonna go ahead and put that on my table, and then we're gonna put the mini fridge in first, and then put the tank on the mini fridge, if that makes sense. So let's get the tank off. Okay, so when you open the box, this will be everything that it comes with. It's gonna have the main pump that'll pump the water into your tank. This is gonna be to hook onto the back of your tank for your tubing, and this is gonna be the tubing, obviously. And then you'll get the, uh, the sensor and the main cable. The cool thing about the sensor is it actually has three different sensors on it. It's gonna have a low level sensor, the normal level sensor, and then it's gonna have a backup sensor as well, just in case uh, one of your sensors gets like messed up so it doesn't just overflow your tank, which is something really cool about this uh, ATO. So you're gonna wanna go ahead and magnet your sensor at the desired level. Um, we're gonna keep ours a little bit higher. Then you're gonna wanna go ahead and place your pump into where your water reservoir is. It does not have to be above your tank. Um, you can put it below the tank and it'll pump water up. I just have it up here because I do have a um, float valve going down into my sump of uh, Fred's tank. Okay, once you get your pump all the way down to the bottom and suction cup it to the bottom, you're gonna go ahead and add your tubing onto the pump. You can do this beforehand too, it'd probably be easier if you did it before. I'm just dumb and didn't think about it, so we're gonna get this on here. Okay, and then since I have my reservoir above my tank, even if you didn't have it above your tank, I'd still recommend doing this. It does come with this piece here, and basically what this does is it makes it to where your water can't back siphon, which basically means that, let's say the pump's off, it won't just start pouring water into your tank, overflowing your tank. This will keep it from doing that. So we're gonna go ahead and add one of these on here, and you wanna add it above your reservoir, um, so that way if it does end up leaking from this, um, it'll end up back in your reservoir anyway. So we're gonna add it right um, between, you wanna make sure it's not in the water, so we'll add it above the tank like right above here. You can't really see it, but I'm gonna add this onto the... Okay, and then you wanna make sure the arrow is pointing where the water's going, so it's gonna end up facing this way for us. Okay, so we went ahead and cut the tube off. So we're gonna add on uh, the arrow facing this way, and then we're gonna put that onto the other part of the tube, which is by the pump. Okay, now that we got that where it needs to be, we're gonna go ahead and add on this here, and this will basically keep the tubing where, well, keep the tubing on your tank and not on the floor. So we're gonna go ahead and add this. Actually, I'm gonna add this um, a little further back so it doesn't pump the fresh water straight onto the pump, which pumps it straight into the tank. I'd rather pump it into one of the, like the secondary chamber, so that way we're not just pouring straight fresh water into our tank when the pump turns on too. So we're gonna go ahead and add the tubing into the little hole that it has over here. And I am aware that my cable management is horrible, but we're gonna fix that in a future video. Um, we're gonna go ahead and put this in here, like so, and then we'll push this down a little further. Well, I'll keep it elevated so you guys can see the water come out when I turn it on. But basically that's how you do it. And so now all we gotta do is turn it on. All right, so let's plug it in. There it goes. So it's gonna fill this up until it gets to the proper level. We're gonna aim this tubing a little bit away from the power head, kind of behind here. So as you can see, when it gets to the sensor level, it's gonna turn off. So 
give it a little bit longer and boom it pow powered off right at the level I want it and every time it evaporates and that water will go down, it'll turn on and fill up the tank again. I do wanna say thank you to Coalview for sending me the ATO and the ICP test. Be sure to stay tuned for another video on the ICP test. Definitely check out Coalview, the link will be in the description and get you one of these ATOs or an ICP test. But with that being said, that's gonna wrap up today's video. I hope you did enjoy. Also, I'm gonna be doing some changes to my channel. I'm gonna need your guys' help with that. If you haven't noticed, I haven't been posting content on like any of my reptiles or my chickens or any update on that. So I'm thinking about changing my channel to kind of like just doing salt water and fresh water on this channel and then making maybe a second channel for more of my reptiles, amphibians, chickens, stuff like that, my other animals. I am going to need help naming that other channel or I don't even know if you guys want to see that content. I can still post it on here. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. I'd really love to hear them. Until next time, peace.